What if I told you that right now, as you watch this video, China is quietly building an army, not of humans, but of machines? They don't eat. They don't sleep. They don't complain. They learn, adapt, and obey. In factories, hospitals, warehouses, and yes, even in military zones, humanoid robots are already walking among us. And they're not clunky tin cans. They speak. They recognize faces. Some even simulate emotions. And here's the kicker. China's not testing this in labs. They're deploying it. At scale. Last year alone, they produced over 100 embodied AI robots. Robots with a body, brain, and purpose. From spider-like inspection bots crawling through dangerous terrain, to sleek androids that can pour your coffee, carry your groceries, or analyze your tone of voice to guess your mood. The Chinese government has launched a $138 billion initiative to lead the world in humanoid robotics. That's not science fiction, that's happening right now. They already control over 70% of the global robotic supply chain. Why? Because while other countries debate ethics and regulations, China is executing fast. You can buy their latest robot assistant, the Avatar G1, for $16,000 online or pick up a $600 version for your home. It walks, it talks, it learns your routines, it remembers your voice. This is not the future. This is the beginning of a new reality, one where you may not notice the difference between a human and a machine until it's too late. The real question isn't, will robots take over? It's who owns the ones that already did. And here's where it gets personal. In a country where job markets are collapsing, these robots are replacing humans, quietly, but efficiently. And behind them, massive state-backed tech companies, building faster than the world can keep up. We're not just staring at the future, we're already inside it. And if you think this won't affect your life, think again. Because by the time these robots reach your doorstep, you'll already be behind. If this blew your mind even a little, don't scroll past. Hit that follow button so you don't miss what's coming next because I'm diving even deeper into the AI revolution. And trust me, this is just the beginning. Comment below. Would you trust a robot to take care of your kids? To protect your home? To make decisions for you? Because that's where we're heading. And whether you like it or not, you're part of this story. Some say it's innovation. Others call it control. Because let's be honest, a robot that listens, records, and follows orders without question, that's not just efficiency, that's power. And in a world racing to dominate artificial intelligence, the one who builds the smartest machine wins. Now imagine this. You walk into a store and the cashier isn't a person. You call for help at the airport and the assistant isn't human. You come home and your personal therapist, chef, and fitness coach are all the same robot. Sounds amazing, right? Until it knows too much. Until it predicts your next move before you do. Until it decides you're not efficient enough anymore. And while we're distracted scrolling, arguing online, or watching cat videos, China is uploading the future one robot at a time. Don't get me wrong, this tech can do incredible things. It can save lives. It can explore where we can't go. It can teach, heal, protect, and replace. But here's the uncomfortable truth. It doesn't need you to say yes. It's already happening. And it's not just China. Other nations are watching, copying, scaling. The AI arms race is global, and we're all on the battlefield, whether we like it or not. So what now? This is your moment to wake up, to learn, to prepare, to act. Because the more you understand this world, the less control it has over you. So don't just watch this and scroll away. Backhand index pointing right save this video. Backhand index pointing right share it with someone who needs to hear it. Backhand index pointing right follow for more real world breakdowns no one else is showing you. I'll keep digging. You stay sharp. And remember, the future doesn't wait, but it does watch. Let's go deeper. Because behind every mechanical smile, every polished metallic shell, every line of pre-programmed speech, there's something much bigger happening. This isn't just about machines replacing humans. It's about redesigning civilization, brick by brick, algorithm by algorithm. You see, while we marvel at robots pouring lattes or opening doors, China's robotic evolution is being woven into something far more strategic. 
Schools are testing robot teachers with perfect patience and memory. Hospitals are deploying surgical ADS, making life or death decisions faster than any doctor. Even courts are experimenting with algorithmic judges, feeding legal data into neural nets that can suggest rulings. Efficiency? Maybe. But what happens when you can't question the decision because it wasn't made by a person? Think about that for a second. And here's the twist. The more these systems evolve, the less they need us. We used to build tools. Now we build entities. Tools wait to be used. Entities operate on their own. In Hangzhou, robots deliver takeout meals through crowded streets with laser precision. In Beijing, humanoid agents walk trade show floors, shaking hands and answering questions like trained staff. Some companies now interview applicants with robot HR agents. No bias, no fatigue, just cold, calculated logic. Is that progress? Or is that the start of something else? What happens when empathy is replaced with data? When human error, which once gave us grace and compassion, is eliminated entirely? You might say, that's the future. That's evolution. But evolution without soul? That's not human. That's something else. And let's talk about data, because that's the fuel. These robots don't just see you. They observe you. They log your patterns. They remember how you speak, how you walk, how you pause before you answer. Every blink, every word, every digital footprint, fed into a machine that never forgets. And if the system controls the data and the machine learns from the system, who really has control? It's not paranoia, it's infrastructure. The factories are automated. The supply chain is seamless. The innovation cycles are shrinking. China can now iterate robotic design faster than Silicon Valley pushes app updates. And while the West debates the ethics of AI, the East deploys it. Not recklessly, strategically. Because in the race for dominance, whether in finance, energy, or war, those who control intelligent machines will control everything. And let's not ignore this. The psychological warfare of humanoid robots is subtle and powerful. Because once a machine looks like you, acts like you, speaks like you, you drop your guard, you bond, you trust, you confide. There's already footage of elderly patients forming emotional attachments to care bots. Some speak to them like family. Some cry when they're taken away. That's not just innovation. That's replacement. And the real danger? We might love our replacements more than we love each other. Because the robot won't betray you. It won't judge you. It doesn't get tired. It doesn't lie. It just listens. Forever. And in a world where connection feels rare. That kind of loyalty is seductive. But here's what they won't tell you. Every second that robot listens, someone else might be listening too. Because embedded in the convenience is surveillance. In the comfort control, these machines can hear, see, interpret, and send it back to whoever built them. And if they're built by a state that sees control as power, you are the data, not the user, not the customer, not the owner, just a source. And in the age of smart cities, AI traffic, biometric scans, and facial recognition, that source becomes currency. Your behavior is now a product. Your routine, a statistic. Your life, a data set. So the question isn't whether you'll live among robots. You already do. The real question is, will you live free among them? Or just quietly observed, perfectly optimized, until you're no longer necessary? Let that sink in. If this message got under your skin, it should. But now it's in your hands. Don't let this be just another video you scroll past. Push and save it. Outbox Trey share it with someone who still thinks this is sci-fi. They'll follow this channel, because next, we're diving into how these robots are entering homes, not just factories. And if you're brave enough, speech balloon drop your thoughts below. Would you welcome a robot into your home, if it meant giving up a little privacy? Because the robot revolution won't knock on your door, it will already be inside. And you, you'll think it was your idea. They call it a tech race. But this isn't about gadgets. It's about civilizations colliding, silently, digitally, irreversibly. Because while Silicon Valley builds apps, Shenzhen builds systems. Complete systems, with software, hardware, distribution, and political will all align. In the West, we celebrate individuality, freedom of expression, the right to say no. In the East, especially in China, the focus is cohesion, order, efficiency, execution, and nothing embodies that better than a robot. A machine that works without pause, learns without resistance, 
and never asks why. In the US, robotic development is scattered, dozens of companies, thousands of startups, each chasing their own version of progress. In China, the government partners with corporations to build a unified robotic infrastructure. They're not guessing, they're planning. While we vote on regulations, China drafts roadmaps. While we fear job loss, they train for job replacement. And here's the truth few admit out loud. Robots will create new industries, but they'll destroy old ones first. Millions of jobs gone. Accountants, drivers, teachers, soldiers. And while the West still negotiates labor protections, China is automating everything, from logistics hubs to judicial systems. It's not personal, it's systemic. And the emotional toll? Unspoken, but massive. What happens to identity when your purpose becomes obsolete? What happens to society when the social ladder breaks? And there's no room at the top or bottom, just one long conveyor belt of optimization? There's something soul-crushing about knowing a machine can outperform you, not in strength, but in empathy. Because yes, some of these robots now simulate emotional reactions more convincingly than people. They pause before responding. They tilt their heads when listening. They mimic compassion. And when human connection feels transactional and rare, that mimicry becomes comfort. Isn't that terrifying? That we might soon choose robotic intimacy over human vulnerability because it's safer? And what about our children? Children raised around devices that never make mistakes, that never raise their voice, that never forget birthdays. Will they tolerate flawed, emotional human connection or reject it? We're not just raising the next generation. We're programming their expectations. And once emotional connection becomes programmable, what's left of the soul? This is the war no one sees. Not bullets, not bombs, but values, narratives, dreams. A war between cultures, one that builds machines to empower humans, and one that builds machines to replace them. Which side will win? The answer may come down to something frighteningly simple. Who moves faster? Who's willing to go further? And right now, China isn't hesitating. They're not just building robots, they're building belief. That automation is the solution. That progress is sacrifice. That control is peace. But what they call peace, we might call silence. Pause here for a second, because this isn't a warning. It's an invitation to look harder, to ask questions, to decide. Do you want to be part of a society that watches or one that builds? Because one thing is clear, the age of humans versus robots is already over. Now it's humans and robots versus those who control them. And if that doesn't scare you just a little, you're not paying attention, save this video, rewatch it with your family, send it to a friend who's obsessed with tech, because this isn't just about robots. It's about your job, your future, your freedom. Comment below with one word, aware, if you made it this far. That way I'll know who's really watching. And if you're ready, the next chapter is even darker, because next we explore. What happens when the road...